Well, if you have your Bibles, you can open them up to the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 15. I'm going to move rather rapidly tonight. You know, we've been talking about going deeper in God. There's a deeper place than what you know right now. A deeper place. Uh, there's a higher place. We're talking about going higher in another place. Uh, you know, there's transitions through our life where we enter into another realm, though physically maybe we're in the same. Like uh, when I got born, again, that was a place I had never been to before when I came to know Christ. And then when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, that was a, another place I had gone into, a place that I never knew existed. And, and then when I uh, uh, discovered healing in the scriptures and it was mine, that was another place I went into. And uh, as I hungered for God, because we're going to discover that these places, these secret places, these amazing places that God has for you and I is only acquired by faith that produces hunger. See, it's a faith that produces desperation. It's a faith that produces longing to know God in ways that we've never known him before. Now, it, it might sound like I'm talking about seeking an experience. I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about seeking God. So just those things I just went through, think about them. And most of us here have already been to those places. Uh, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, salvation. Uh, if you have not yet received that, it's available for you, but, but you got to hunger for it. Uh, the more you hunger, the more you thirst, the more you long for the things of God, uh, the faster they will come to you. Uh, that's scripturally. It says, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. So as we hunger and thirst, and you know, my hunger for God uh, just kept on going deeper and deeper until one night I was with another brother who I had led to Christ and to the baptism. Willie Wine, his name was, uh, a black African uh, brother. And we were in prayer one night in my barracks and out of my voice came a cry. And I, I said, Lord, let me experience the, 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 the sufferings, the agonies, and the torments of hell, that I can have passion on those who have been there. And it's in my books back there. And to me, Paul said, whether in the body, out of the body, I don't know. To me, it seemed like it was physical, real, more real than, than the physical world. The floor of my room opened up, and I fell into hell for two and a half hours. And, and when I came out of that experience, I, I, I had entered into a place of having an understanding that I've never left that place. You know, when you, when you have an experience, it, 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 nothing can speak against an experience. And, and when you have that experience, you experience, you come into a place of knowing that you're forgiven. Wonderful place to live. See, there's, there's a place of power, a, pay, a place of life, a place of joy, a place of victory, a, a, a place of a peace that passes understanding, a, a, a place of, of authority. And in the book of Isaiah 57, 15, it says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place. I dwell. God says, I dwell in a high and holy place. God dwells in a high place and holy place. That's where God dwells. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. So, you, you know, we got to have a humble spirit, humble yourself, uh, a contrite spirit. Uh, you know, one of the greatest, I think one of the greatest hindrances to us growing spiritually, I can't really speak pertaining to women when it comes to pride, but men, men seem to have a streak of pride in us. And a lot of times we just we just get stubborn to our own destruction. We, we just, you know, a, a lot of men, I, I was raised in a home, I never, I never heard, my mom did, but I never heard my dad ever tell me he loved me. He just never did. He, he never told me he loved me. Until I got born again and I kept telling him and telling him and telling him. And one time, one time my dad told me that he loved me and I wept like a baby. I, I didn't know it, it affected me that much. Because I really wasn't looking for my dad's approval. You know, some, some men, they never grow up. They're always looking for their dad's approval. For some reason, after I got born again, after I got saved, after I came into that place of knowing Christ, uh, I, I, never, I never sought to be approved by my natural father. 
And so I didn't realize there was a place inside of me that needed to, that affirmation, that needed that uh, confirmation, that needed that I love you, son. And it, 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 but but uh, but in Christ, I've come to a place where my confidence is in Him, my trust is in Him, my hope is in Him. I, I, I think I told you last week that when a lot of the well-known ministers fell, and I knew some of them personally, my heart was heavy for them, but it never caused me even for a second to back off from God. If anything, I went deeper into God. See, there's a, a, a deepness in God, and God dwells. Listen, God dwells with a person who is of a contrite and humble spirit. So what that means is a person who is of a contrite and a humble spirit, uh, 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 they, they step up into that place where God is. See, you may think that Christ came down from earth and, and he came down to where we lived. Well, physically he came, but he never lowered the standards. Christ never lowered the standards. What Christ came to do was not just to shed his blood for us and take our sins for us and, and, and to take the wrath of the Father for us, but, but he died and rose again to bring us to where he's at. Christ came to bring us to that place where he lives. He dwells. He, 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 where he is. And, 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 and it's a place of glory. It, it is a place of glory. It's a place of power. It's a place of victory. It's a, it's a place of joy. It's a place of peace that passes understanding. It's a, it's a place of life. See, the, the devil came to bring you where he's at. And his, he, he said, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he said the thief comes to do. But Jesus said, I am come. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He, Jesus came to bring you to the place where he lives. See, Jesus was in the midst of humanity, but Jesus was in the secret place of the Almighty. Jesus lived in that place of continual non-stop intimacy with his father. That, that fellowship with his father never was broke until when he was made sin and he was on the cross and the father had to turn his face away from his son. But in his humanity up to that moment and all the way back to where time never was, Jesus was in that place of intimacy with the Father. Now, it's hard for us to comprehend, but those who have gone on before us, those who, and, and it says there's a cloud of witnesses, and many have gone on before us who looked to Christ, trusted Christ, believed in Christ, loved Christ, and they, they have gone on before us and are called a cloud of witnesses. The day will come when we will join that, clo that, 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 that cloud, that group, and our intimacy with God, that place of power, that place of joy, that place of peace, that place of life, that place of victory, that place of authority, that place of power. And I just want to go through these things because it's important for you to understand this. It will n we will never come out of that place. Never throughout eternity. We will always be in a place. The Bible says that we'll never, have, we'll never shed another tear of sorrow or sadness or pain or anything forever will be in that place that heavenly bliss forever we will be there can you say praise the lord but the reality of the fact is that god wants to take us there now jesus did not come to leave us the way he found us salvation is not just the fact that christ did all of these wonderful things for us and now we're blessed with all heavenly places but god wants us to reach into the heavenly places and to appropriate or to make those things ours healing is not just a confession god wants you to experience health in your body. God wants you to experience healing in your body. God wants you to experience uh, financial uh, blessings in your life to where all of your needs are met according to his riches and glory. God wants you to experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. And, and some of you uh, take it quite easy, don't you, mom? 
See, and Howard, don't, <laughs> and Sherry, don't. There's some that just, they, they just know how to take a hold of that. Right, Elizabeth? They just know how to take a hold of that joy. But that joy, it's a place of joy. And it, it's not a physical location. It, it, it's in the spirit. When he says we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ, that's not a physical location. That's a spiritual location in, in the sense that it's ours. It belongs to us. God wants you to have it. God wants you to enjoy it. But but he dwells, God who dwells in a high and holy place. He dwells with a person who is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the spirit of the contrite ones. Uh, the word revive in the Hebrew would mean to resurrect. He, he wants to, res that's, if the same spirit that dwelt in Christ dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. Quicken. Uh, have you ever had your mortal body quickened? Last week I used some kind of strange terminology, but I said uh, Holy Ghost goosebumps, uh, uh, spirit chills. I mean, them aren't good words probably, but, uh, you know, when the Spirit of God moves on you. And we sing a song, when the Spirit of the Lord moves upon my heart, I will sing like David sang. And, and that's what David did. The Spirit of God was moving on his heart, and David sang, and David danced, and, 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 and David prayed. And when the Spirit of God moves us, it's a quickening. It's a place of quickening. It's a place of life. It's a place of joy. God does not want believers to walk around and look like they've been... Uh, 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 they've been weaned with tick, uh, uh, dill pickle juice. He really doesn't. He, 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 he doesn't want you to be baptized in, 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 in some kind of sour juice. He, he wants there to be joy uh, out of your belly shall flow. Rivers of what kind of water? Living water, living water. Uh, so there is a place of supernatural divine joy. Supernatural divine peace. Supernatural divine life. You know what I find strange is in some of the movements today, they attack the supernatural moves of God because they don't understand them. And then they attribute them to devils. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm talking about Pentecostal people because they're leaning to the understanding of their mind. And yet he said, I will fill your mouth with laughter. Did you know God said he would fill your mouth? Look it up. He said, I will fill your mouth with laughter. I will fill you with joy. How, 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 many of you, uh, how many of you know somebody that uh, really needs to be filled with joy? And maybe they're sitting next to you. <laughs> I really need them to be filled with joy. I need them to, you know, but a lot of people in the house of God are living in a place of torment, living in a place of fear, living in a place of confusion, living in a place of unfulfilled desires, um, living in a place of misery. I'm talking about born again Christians. They're, they're not living where God wants them to live. Uh, but it's not God's fault. So you got to humble yourself. You got to have faith. You got to believe. You got to receive. Uh, you got to take a hold of what belongs to you. Um, remember when you were little children and uh, you weren't very high, you know, you, and, and yet your older brother or sister took your favorite toy, your favorite doll. You fought for it, didn't you? That's mine. You can't have that. That, that's, that's my Barbie doll. That's my G.L. Joe. That's this, that's that. And you fought for it. And, and some people in their childhood fought more for what belonged to them than what grown-ups fight for now. We, we got to fight. You got to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight it. And, 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 and I know I've gone because I was manic depressant. And uh, before we knew what the word meant and before they were giving medication... And when I got born again, I got delivered from that suicidal tendencies, but it began to try to come back on me. And as a young Christian in my 20s, I took authority over it. As a pastor, many times when circumstances were all against me, it seemed like, you know, I knew God was with me, but it looked like all hell was being poured out loose on me. And it looked like we were gone as a ministry more times than I can tell you here. And I would never, if any of you have come here in the length, I know Pam's been here since she was a young girl. Pam, have you ever ha heard me beg for money? Never, never, because I look to God. But you know, there's been many times when I didn't tell the congregation that by next Sunday it could be that we would be gone. Now, praise God, we're not in that place right now. But God, so I don't want you to be full of fear, but God has always taken care of us. 
Be because I would fight. I would fight. I would say, okay, Father, you put me here. You establish this place. It's your place. And uh, Lord, I thank you that you meet our needs according to your riches and glory. And we're taking it. So God dwells in a high and holy place. And there's a place of of rest, there's a place of life, a place of joy, a place of protection, divine protection. There is a place of divine protection and a place of love and a place of provision and it's found in Christ. It's all found in Christ. It's all found in Christ. And, and you're not too old to go to that place. You can still go to that place. I don't care how long you've been uh, uh, saved or how long you, or, or how, how brief a time you've been saved or, or, or how, how old you are, you can go to that place. Uh, Psalms 91 is a powerful, powerful chapter. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That is a, a wonderful place to live. The psalmist wrote that. He that dwelleth. See, you've got to live there. You've got to dwell there. Your mind, your heart, your emotions. Uh, I, I believe it's dwelling in the first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all of thy heart, soul, mind, strength, and being, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You can go there and you can dwell there. You can live in that place. Uh, you know very well that even though you're physically here, mentally, you could be somewhere else, right? Mentally, uh, my son Stephen, he's, he, he, he has an imagination that's not of this world. And a lot of times, if you look at Stephen, you can tell he's there, but he is not there. <laughs> he's somewhere else, you know, uh, conquering, well, who knows what, you know. Maybe he's dancing on the moon and eating green cheese. I don't know, but he's not here. And so, spiritually speaking, you, you can be in the, in, in the midst of a battle like, like when Paul and Silas were beat and locked up in the prison and their heads were in stock. Their bodies were there, but they weren't there. And they were singing praises to God and they were praying. And because they were in a place of worship, in a place of thankfulness, in a place of praise, in a place uh, uh, of life, uh, an angel came. See, when you're in the right place, God comes. Now, you would think it'd be opposite. Well, when, when God's in the right place, you know, no, you got to get in the right place in your heart, in your attitude. You know what? There's there's places in your marriage you dare not go because it will bring death and destruction. And, you know, I know what I'm talking about. But there's places in your marriage. I've discovered a long time ago. I've been married 41 years. And there's times I put myself in the place where I'm telling you it it, it just storms exploded on me because I, I, I made the wrong decision or I said the wrong words. How many know all it takes is one wrong word uh, to bring the storm? <laughs> How many of you men have got enough sense to learn that? <laughs> just one. I'm, it's taken me many years to do that. But just the other day, I just said I came home and I said three words, I think, to her. And here came the storm clouds. And I walked away and I, I said, Lord, I, I really messed up. And he said, yeah, you should have known better. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I went to my office and I said, well, I'm going to have to pray this thing through. Instead of being critical of her being angry at misunderstanding what I said, and she probably didn't un misunderstand what I said. See, I, I heard some things and it put my attitude in the wrong place. And I, and I stayed in my office for a while because I learned that when the storm's brewing, get away from it. And, and I stayed away for about a half an hour. And then I went back and I tippy toed like a little mouse into her office. And I said, baby doll, I said, can you please forgive me? She said, I'll think about it. <laughs> but, you know, there's places in the spirit where where for Ananias and Sapphira, they got into a place where they lied to the Holy Ghost. Remember that? And 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 the the husband lied and said, well, we, we sold a piece of land. Here's the money. And Pete, Peter Apostle said, is that all of it? Oh, yes. And he says, well, he said goodbye. And he fell down dead. <laughs> he got in a place he should have never been. He put himself in that place. And then his wife came back uh, not too long after, after they carried out her, her husband's dead body. And Peter said to him, hey, can you confirm to me whether or not this is what you sold the land for and this is what you're giving? Yes, that's true. And he says, well, the, the feet of the, the, the men are here to drag you away too. It got in a bad place. Now, I'm not saying a lot of people say that God killed them. I would say this, though. I would say they opened the barn door for the devil to wipe them out. How about if I say it that way? They opened the door for the devil to wipe them out. 
And a lot of times people are living in the wrong place where we're in our attitude and our words and our thoughts, listen, in our conduct and what we're watching and, and what we're listening to, huh? what we're embracing, get out of those places. There, there, there's unholy places. See, there was a holy place. Uh, Moses, he, he was in the wrong place when he was in Egypt. I mean, he was raised in Egypt, and he knew in his heart he was called to bring deliverance to Israel. And what did he do? What did he do? He, he decided he's going to deliver Israel, and he killed uh, an Egyptian soldier. And the next day he saw two Israelites fighting, and he tried to step between them. And, and they said, well, you're going to kill us too like you did? And, and they says that he ran for his life. Now, it, it led you to believe he was afraid of Pharaoh, but actually in the book of Hebrews, he's, I believe he had a revelation. He came into a place. A revelation is a place. A revel, revelation is when the word of God is quickened to you by the Holy Ghost and you get a revelation. You get a revelation of maybe casting all your cares on him because he cares for you, and that is a place of rest. It's a place of peace. It's a place. Now, some of you are in a place where you toss and turn on that long because you worry about stuff, and you need to get into the place where you just give it to God. You just give it to God. I remember going to Bible school, Kenneth Hagin's ministry, Ramah, and, and they had humongous bills, humongous bills. And he told us this story. He, 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 he'd come at the, uh, at the middle of the month. He'd come and say, well... And he said with a smile, he says, it looks like we're going to have to shut the doors. He said uh, he never wanted the place. See, he never wanted it because it was a heavy burden. He was a traveling minister. And all of a sudden, God had him start a Bible school, a Bible college. And he'd stand there and with a smile on his face, he said, well, he's, by the end of this month, it looks like uh, we're not going to be able to pay all of our bills and uh, we might have to shut down. I just want to let you know ahead of time. And at the end of the month, that he'd come back up on the stage with a real sad look on his face. Honestly, you can ask my wife. He'd say, well, I guess we'll have to keep on going. God met our needs again. <laughs> God met our needs again. <laughs> but we can come into a place where God meets all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And there's a holy place that God wants us to come. And he told, he told Moses, he said, you're standing on holy ground when he went up the side of the mountain and he said, you're standing on holy ground. Take off your shoes. See, there's a place where the fire of God is burning. That's where God wants you to live. God wants you to be in the place where the fire, the holy fire. See, all great awakenings come with holiness. Biblical holiness now. That means completely given over to God. And we, you and I, God wants to move us into that place of holiness uh, and there are so many amazing places available for us. Hebrews 9.24, for Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands. There was, there was holy places made with hands. I, I, I know that some people, I, we don't serve coffee in here, and I don't believe in having a coffee bar in here. Uh, some people get offended because we have our books that may be with the prices on them. But if you know the value of those books, we're not making money off them. We're not gouging people. It wasn't the fact that they sold animals in the temple. It was they were ripping the people off. That dove, you could have got out on the street for three bucks. They were charging 30 bucks for it. See, your, your body is the holy place. This building is a building. And I think we need to have respect for it. But, and it is a place of prayer. But your body is the holy temple. This is a holy place. See, in Catholicism, when I was a Catholic, we would come through the back door. How many of you were Catholics, any of you? And we would come in, and, and, and it was all this reverence, and we'd come in, and all these statues of all these saints, and, and we'd come in, and, and, and we would kneel, and I don't know if I can even do that anymore, and we'd stick our finger in the holy water, and we would splash it all over our bodies, and then we'd go down, and it's like we were, in a, we were at, a, at a funeral, well, I don't believe that God wants to gather as if we're at a funeral. Amen. I don't think God's afraid of you shouting. Hey. Getting happy. <laughs> laughing. That's not disrespectful to God. God don't mind if you laugh. Uh, we're in the presence of the King of kings and our Lord of lords. But Christ entered into a place not made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but in the heaven itself now to appear before the presence of God for us. Heaven is a holy place, and we're going to be in that holy place. Your body can be filled with the holiness of God. If your heart and your mind and your attitude is right, you can be filled, you become a holy place. 
Your body is to be a holy place. That, that means it, it, it's, it's sanctified by God. It's possessed by God. He said, I will dwell in you and live in you and walk in you. In the old covenant, the, the glory of God came into the Holy of Holies. And it was over the, the tabernacle in the wilderness, a fire by night and a cloud by day. And if anybody would walk into that temple, if anybody would walk into the Holy of Holies, there was the outer court and there was the holy place and then there was Holy of Holies. And over the mercy seat was the most holy place where the mercy angels were. Well, you and and I are that place now. Did you know that? You and I in the earth are to be that holy of holies where God himself dwells and, and, and God is holy and God wants you to live in the holy place. God, God wants us to only be looking at that which is holy and thinking only that which is holy and doing that which is only holy. You, 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 can't, you ain't going to pass a bunch of laws to get people to do this stuff because it's a condition of the heart. You've got to choose to be holy. You, you got to want to be holy as he is holy. In Psalms 24, 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Who's going to come into the place? Those who have made some decisions in their life. Okay, Lord. I'm only going to do that which pleases you. Oh, it's heavy, I know. You've got to have help to do this, I understand. But God will help you. That pleases God. This is, a, this is not between you and your pastor or anybody else. It's between you and God. God, I want to be holy as you're holy. I, I, I want to, I, and, and you said I can dwell in a high and holy place, and I want to dwell there. Uh, Psalms 46, 4, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make the, glad the city of God, a holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that rightly early. For in other words, when you and I come into this place of, of of loving God, uh, loving what God loves and hating what God hates. He will show up early in our life. He will be there. And I know personal experiences. There's been times in my life where I, I just really, really, really went after God. I'm not trying to get something from God. Please listen to me. A lot of people are coming to God, and, and there's nothing wrong with it because they need their finances met. They need healing in their body. Uh, they need wisdom. That's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. You're coming. But, but God, you know what? If all my children did was come to me when they wanted stuff, and they can and they do, and, and, and I grant them. Uh, but, but if they just want to come and spend time with me, just want to come and say, Dad, can I just sit with you for a while? Can I, can I just, you know, I probably wouldn't know, I probably wouldn't know what to say to him. Dad, can we just come to spend time with you? I just want to uh, spend some time with you, you know. Uh, just get, my wife will do that. She'll say, you know, I, I'm so sorry to say that usually during Valentine's, I, I didn't really do a lot for my wife. And this year, uh, I guess I, I must be growing up to some extent. I must, I must be maturing in this realm. And so I heard that uh, the, the steakhouse had a special on Thursday. I didn't want to go on Friday because, you know, every place is filled. And I caught up and I arranged for us to uh, have a sweetheart table at this steakhouse. And, and then I actually went out and bought her a Valentine's card. Can you imagine that? And so we went on a little kind of little date and, and she was so blessed that, I gave her a Valentine's card. It was just, it blessed her. And, and see, I, I, was, I was getting into a place where I should have been living for the last 41 years. But it's better late than never. Say, it's better late than never. Late than Wives, never. tell your husband that. It's better late than never. <laughs> It's better late than never. But see, there's places of God's blessings and God's provisions and God's glory, a, a, a place of deep, intimate prayer. There is a place of deep, intimate prayer, and you should experience that. That's one thing I've not neglected is there's times I have, I, I have a, I find, I find a place of prayer. Jesus, Jesus said, find a closet and, and go into it and talk to the Lord. Just fellowship with him. God just wants to fellowship with you. Can you imagine before Adam ever sinned, it says that God would literally come down in the cool of the day and walk with Adam and his wife. He, he would just spend time with them. It wasn't because they had anything to offer him. He, he just wanted to spend time with them. And so God wants to spend time with you. God just wants 
you to fellowship with him. And, and, and it's not as difficult as you think it is. You get up in the morning. A lot of times I get up in the morning. I have my devotional. And I'll, I'll, just, I'll just tell the Lord how much I love him and how much I appreciate him and how much I need him. And I mean it. I'm serious. I am overwhelmed with how God has blessed me in spite of me. <laughs> Can you grab that? I am so blessed how God has helped me and protected me and been there for me. And, and when everybody else seemed like they forsook me, he never forsook me. And I'll tell you that God's never forsaken you. God's always been there for you. But he's waiting for you. God is waiting for you to draw nigh to him. And he'll draw. So there's an intimate place of, of prayer. There's an intimate place of worship. It doesn't matter if you can sing very good. I can't sing very good. And sometimes I'll get overzealous in the morning. And I'll sing a little bit too loud. Next thing I hear the kids pounding their feet on the floor. Like, Dad, you're waking us up. And I'll just back it off. But in my heart, I'm still having intimate worship. And in those times of prayer and worship. And, 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 and how many know what I'm talking Talking about come on God shows up God doesn't have to give me feelings or emotions and I'm not seeking them but he gives them to me he, he shows up and he begins to reveal himself to me he wants me to know him do you know that's what he created you for for you to know him in an intimate personal way don't ever try to know God through somebody else's experience uh, their experiences can help you and encourage you because God is not a respecter of people. Don't ever seek somebody else's experience. You just seek God and God will give you experiences. Now, before we close, I'd like to talk, and there's lots of books back there, and I do not exalt this man whatsoever. There is a man by the name of, uh, of, 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 of Smith Wigglesworth. I talked about him this morning. I've got 40 books. I've, and the reason why God laid Smith on my heart so heavy was what I liked about Smith. He was just a plumber. That's all he was. Everybody said he was a man. He was a he was an apostle of faith. No, he wasn't. Smith was just as a young boy, eight years old. His grandma led him to the Lord in a Methodist church and he got a hunger for souls as a young boy. And he led his family to the Lord. And eventually he met his wife-to-be, Polly, who was a fiery preacher, young girl uh, in the Salvation Army. And they fell in love and they got married. And, but Sm Sm Smitty, he's, they call, she called him Smitty, he quit third grade. In third grade he quit, never learned how to read or write. But his wife taught him after they got married. And then they opened up a little mission. And she was the preacher, he never preached. And she was the spiritual leader in the family, you might say. And he just, he became a, a plumber. He, 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 you know, he, he, he got an apprenticeship and he got taught and he got in his own business. And as years went by, he, he, he was in a place where he became lukewarm. He became cold. He became indifferent. At 48 years old, he began, God began to storm and he heard about people getting baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. That's a place he had never been. And so he went to the meetings and make a long story short, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and he entered into a place. And when he got into that place of that supernatural place, it, it lit a fire in him that was never to go out until God took him home in his 80s. And he just began to go. It's like a set of stairs. Every stair you take up is a higher place and a higher place and a higher place. And, and you can go up higher and higher in these realms, deeper and deeper in God. You can, you can. And so he did. And uh, the very first time he preached, the power of God fell in that little church because he'd never preached. And his wife, Polly, said, if you've been baptized, the Holy Ghost preach. And he did. And the power of God came. And then he was asked to conduct a healing meeting. And he, he refused to. He said, I, I can't do no healing meeting. Uh, I, I've never been to that place. I, I've just started preaching now. And the men who were over it said, well, we're going to some kind of conference, Smitty. So you're going to have to do this conference. And, and, and they he did it once a month and so he did it and he was shocked uh people were getting healed all over the place he was shocked so he went into another place of walking in bringing healing next thing you know he began to come into demand and before he died he traveled the world and he brought revival wherever he went because he lived in a place of revival that's where he lived that was a place you can live in a place of revival but i i i i went through all i got all the 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 and he himself never wrote a book what he do 
is he'd preach a sermon and somebody would take notes on it and they would put it in different periodicals and different magazines, Pentecostal papers, and uh, so you can find them on the web if you really, really search. They're not copyrighted. And I, I took all that there was ever written about Smitty and I put it in books. And he said some amazing things talking about these places. And so I, I just want to, because there is a place of visions, a place of dreams, a place of prophetic words, a place of miracles in Christ. And it's for you. Say, it's for me. It's for me. It's for me. Now, I, I, I went through all of his, I was going through all of his writings, and over 900 times he talked about being in a place. So we're not going to cover all that. I'm just going to say a couple of things. What he said, Smitty, work, Smitty, uh, Smitty said, Smith Wigglesworth, uh, he says, there's a place of death that brings you into a place of life. What does that mean? There's a place where you die to self, and it brings you into life. There is no, if, if, if an acorn doesn't fall into the ground and die, it will never experience becoming an oak tree. Think about that. And you are meant to be an oak tree. Uh, the planning of the Lord. You, but you'll never experience being an oak tree until you die. You, you, what are we dying to? We're, we're, not, we're not dying to what's right and what's holy and what's just. We're not dying to, to that things that are beautiful and lovely. We're dying to what's contrary to God's will. That's what we're dying to, isn't it? We have a greater challenge today than ever before because, come on, when I was a kid, we, we didn't have the technology. Uh, we had a black and white TV in my house until I was probably 17 years old. I left home at 15, and we were never allowed to watch it except on Sunday. Uh, if, we, if we were in, because we were a, a working family. I mean, I, 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 as a young boy, I had a newspaper route. My dad had it. was always working in the garden, picking up rocks. He'd have us load up uh, our wagons with rocks, take it to a part of the yard, dump it, and the next day we'd have to load it all back up and take it to the other side of the yard. Uh, I guess my dad just felt like boredom was the playground of the devil, and so he kept us busy. And, and then uh, I worked on a farm, a dairy farm, baling hay, and then I worked on a strawberry plantation. This is all when I'm, I'm still a kid, and, and then I worked at a gas station when I was 15, and of course then uh, I joined the Navy, and my, my whole life was work. I mean, that's all. I, I, see, the problem is most kids, they're not raised with a work ethic anymore. They don't know what it means to work. But I, I found out I carried that work ethic into my relationship with God. Uh, I knew that if I was going to grow in God, it was going to take work. Uh, that work is not a, a cuss word. Say work is not a cuss word. I was going to have to work at prayer. I'm going to have to work at memorizing scriptures. I was going to have to work at, at, at providing for my family. I was going to have to whatever it took. And, and, and so it takes work to go into these different levels and to go up. Now, listen, this is what Smitty said. You must come to a place of ashes, a place of ashes, a place of helplessness, a place of wholehearted surrender where you do not refer to yourself any longer. You have no justification of your own in regard to anything. Now, this guy was a plumber. He got this from God. You are prepared to be slandered, to be despised by everybody, but because of his personality in you, he reserves you for himself because you are godly, and he sets you on high because you have known his name. He causes you to be the fruit of his loins and bring forth his glory so that you will no longer rest in yourself. Your confidence is in God and it is lovely. The Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. He said this one time when he was preaching where you, you, you don't get offended no more. Are you in a place where you cannot be offended? Them that love thy law, nothing shall offend them, right? Are, are you there yet? <laughs> Say, help me, Jesus. Are you to the place where you don't care people slander you as long as it's not true? Uh, through the years, people said a lot of nasty stuff about me. Uh, Sister Pam will go to a grocery store somewhere and somebody will walk up to her and say some nasty stuff. And, and, uh, and she doesn't gossip to me, but at times she said, Pastor Mike, she said, uh, I saw so-and-so today. I said, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you can't believe what they said about you. And I start laughing. You know why? Because I don't care. As long as it's not true. I've heard people say, your reputation in the community stinks. I said, if it does, it's not true because I've never stole from anybody. I've never ripped anybody off. I, I, I don't backstab. I don't gossip. Hello? I, I don't go around speaking evil of people. I, I, I never try to get back at people. Why? It's Jesus inside of me. <laughs> it's Christ inside of me. 
So I don't care. Don't, I've always told people through the years, don't worry if they gossip about me. If they lied about Jesus, they're going to lie about you as long as what they're saying isn't true, right? Amen. He said this, before God could bring me into this place, he has broken me a thousand times. Smith, the plumber, said this. I have wept, and he's talking about a place of power, a place of miracles, a place of healing, a place of deliverance. This is why there's not very many who live in this place. He said, he has broken me a thousand times. I have wept, I have groaned, I have travailed. Many a night until God broke me. It seems to me that until God has mowed you down, you never can have this long suffering for others. We can never have the gifts of healing and the working of miracles in operation only as we stand in the divine power that God gives us and we we stand believing God and having done all we stand and still stand believing now he, he didn't write that he preached that that's what he shared he said God's broken me if I see Smitty used to have a terrible anger terrible the kids would scatter he would just blow up and he had a terrible anger and he said God dealt with him and said that's enough Smitty he said that stuff's got to die in you you cannot be angry like this anymore I want you to be gentle and kind and long-suffering and God had to really take him uh, uh, take him uh, you know uh, like like a a rope through a knot hole they say he had to really take them through it to get it out of them and there's some things inside of us that God's got to really really deal with us to get it out of us because we we a lot of times we we got it from our parents or our upbringing and and, and things and uh, so you you got to let God take this stuff out of you otherwise you're not going to go to a higher place he, he said this when you exercise your faith you will find that there is the greater power in you then that is in the world. Oh, to be awakened out of unbelief into a place of daring for God on the authority of his blessed book and the redemptive work of Christ. He said to take you out of the place of unbelief. See, all disobedience and all sin is because you're in a place of unbelief. You really don't believe what God has said. Um, there are scriptures that have really delivered me. For instance, in Galatians, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatever a man sowed, that's will he also reap. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. So that that place, see, I, 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 have a, I, have, I have the divine fear of the Lord in my heart. Now, don't misunderstand me. I have at times ignored it and hardened my heart, and it's gotten me into terrible trouble, and it'll get you into trouble too. My children tell me, they said, Dad, we're so glad you've made all these dumb decisions because we see the results of them and we're not going to walk in the same steps you have. And I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? But it had been better if I wouldn't have gone against the will of God in my life. Uh, God has given us authority over all the power of the devil, all that we may live in the place where we realize this always and that we're completely submitted to that authority. A place of total submission to the authority of God. Are you in that place tonight? Are you, in that, uh, are, you, are you in a place where you understand the authority of Christ and you're submitted to the authority of Christ? The centurion, he said, speak the word only. My servant will be healed because I'm a man under authority. And Jesus said, you have great faith. How many of you want great faith? Well, you can't get great faith by not submitting to God. I'm not talking about uh, rules and regulations of man. I'm talking about God, submitting to the will of God for your life. The devil doesn't want you in that place. See, as, as long as you're, you're, you're doing your own thing and you're not submitted to God, you're no threat to the devil. Who was the greatest threat to the enemy? Uh, Jesus Christ, wasn't he? I mean, what a threat. Even uh, when he was just uh, anywhere from newborn to two years old, he was such a threat to where Herod was driven by the devil to have all the babies murdered where Jesus had been born in that area. Uh, uh, Raquel, uh, Rachel had lost her children and murdered them all, murdered them all because he was a threat as a baby. And Jesus was a threat. He was a threat. And uh, because of his attitude, he was always in the place of being submitted to the father. Always. Isn't that a lo wonderful place to be? Always in agreement with his daddy. Always in harmony. He said, my father and I are one. What a place. That's where Jesus prayed in John 17. Father, that they may be one. Are you getting something here tonight? <laughs> Y'all looking at me like a cow at a new gate. <laughs> yeah. And, and are you, uh, do you want to live in that place of total harmony in your attitude, in your mind, in your word, in your thoughts, in your deeds with God? This is not between you and anybody else. See, this is between you and God. And when you get into that place is where the power of God will be. 
the authority of God, the, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, uh, uh, instant prayers being answered. It, 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 it'll become easy. It'll become easy, but you got to get into that place. Um, everything I have has brought me to a place of brokenness before God, a place of brokenness, a place of humility. A, 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 I mean, I, I, I've gone through a lot. Uh, and, and I'm not saying I'm a real humble man. I'm a real broken man. I'm a real uh, surrendered man. But I have gone through a lot of trials and tests like you have. And, and, and there's been a lot of breaking in my life. A lot of breaking. A lot of breaking in my life. And, and, and you might say I'm a broken man. But he, he put me back together again. I have no confidence in Mike Yeager. I have no confidence. I, 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 I'm not surprised at what stupid things I can do when I'm not looking to Jesus. <laughs> I'm not surprised at the stupid things you can do when you're not living for Jesus. Nothing shocks me anymore, honestly. Nothing shocks me because I know what the human flesh can do. I know what the human flesh can do. He said this, one half of the trouble in the body of Christ is people murmuring over the conditions they are in. So that's half of the problem. People murmuring, people griping, complete people complaining. The Bible teaches us not to murmur. That's not in a, you're not in a good place murmuring, griping, and complaining. You're not. Jesus, whenever people came to him, listen to this now, he never asked them what their problem was. Isn't that amazing? Who was the shepherd? He never asked people what their problem was. You know what he asked them? What do you need? <laughs> what do you need? I think a lot more people want to complain about their, their situation than they want a solution for their situation. <laughs> Y'all going to come back next week. <laughs> Pastor Gary's preaching next Sunday night, by the way. <laughs> Tell you all come back now. <laughs> I, I, I like what Hagen said. He used to always say people are like, are like newborn calves in a tin barn, uh, tin barn roof, squalling and bawling all night long. <laughs> God doesn't like, let no corrupt communication. He says, listen to this. He said, the Bible teaches us not to murmur. If you reach that standard, if you reach the standard where you need to be, you will never murmur again. You will be above murmuring. Say, I'm above murmuring. I'm above complaining. You will be in a place where God is absolutely the exchanger of thoughts, the exchanger of actions, the exchanger of your inward purity. He will be purifying you all the time and lifting you higher and higher, and you will know you are not of this world. You get into the place where you don't complain anymore. You don't mumble and gripe and talk about how bad you got it. He said God can begin to lift you into a higher place, in, into a place where you know you're not of this world. Uh, amazing for a plumber to say this kind of stuff, isn't it? It was the Holy Ghost speaking through him. All things are wonderful with our wonderful Jesus. If you would dare rest, you're all upon him. For in other words, give yourself to him. Things would take place and he would change your whole circumstance in a moment through the name of Jesus, a new life can be realized. You would be miraculously changed as one page out of many pages. He was a man who knew God. And he was in a place where he knew God. You know, people who know God, they're different than people who don't. People who know God, they talk different, they think different, they walk different, they act different, they do different. And, and, and in the body of Christ, there's a lot of carnality because, and I'm just going to be honest, because we as spiritual leaders haven't been the kind of men that we should be. I can tell you stories. I've had famous preachers through here experience their shenanigans, their games, their tricks. I mean, tricks. Never spoke evil about them, but I never let them come back again. Well-known man playing the game. This, this is not a game. We, we got, I'm, I'm going to give an account for every soul. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. I, I need to be in a place. Paul said, I came to you in fear and trembling. That's where Paul came. He said, I, I didn't come to you in wisdom of man. He said, I didn't want your faith to stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. This is not a contest for popularity. This is not a contest to make people feel good about themselves. Um, what, what do you mean? You don't want us to feel good about ourselves? No, I want you to feel good about Jesus and find yourself in Jesus. Amen. Find your identity in Jesus, really. Find who you are in Jesus because you are made as a vessel. You are made as a temple. You are made as a house. 
He said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the glory may be of God and not of us. And, 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 and I don't know why this kind of preaching in our society today in the house of God, I think, is considered over the top. But all you got to do is read your Bible. It's not over the top. It's throughout all of the scriptures. Uh, the, uh, I talked on Thursday night about the goodness and the severity of God. Where is that in the pulpits today? Where uh, the goodness of God, if you continue, but the severity of God, if you don't, and you will be cut off. I mean, that's all there. Either give your heart to God or give your heart to the world. You can't live in a lukewarm position. You can for a while, but you're going to be miserable. <laughs> You know why? Miserable people make people miserable because they live in misery. <laughs> tormented people make people tormented because they live in torment. So instead of trying to find out, instead of blaming your, your, somebody else for your torment, because, you know, if you're in the place where God wants you to be, uh, you'll have peace that passes understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory. I, I, I've had many. I just did a book back there called uh, A Faith That Will Not Take No for an Answer. 118 stories. 116 of them are mine. And it's a 300 page book. And it's the most radical things I've gone through. And there's been many times, many times in my life when people were trying to destroy me, even Christians, the communists, the Muslims, uh, the, the, the Yupik Indians, um, the, a gang outsiders. I mean, they were trying to kill me. I mean, they went out of the way to try to destroy me. And, and you know what? In those cases, I was never tormented. I was never fearful. I, I was never worried about my life. I had peace. I had joy. I would laugh. I laughed in the face of death. I am not lying. I laughed in the face of death. But, you know, it wasn't me. I mean, you know that. It was Jesus in me. I laughed at it. I had a journey one time. Uh, that he was going to sue me, him, him and his company, because I did what God told me to do. I, I, God told me what to do, and I did it. And he got me on the phone, this attorney, and he, and he top-notch attorney, and, and, and they were going to sue me, and I laughed at him over the phone. <laughs> he said, why are you laughing? I, I, I wasn't a, a disgusting laugh. I wasn't be, I said, listen, I said, I just simply obeyed God. And I, I said, I've put you into the hands of God. And I, I believe that God is able to handle you. And he never called me back again. <laughs> just freedom in Jesus, right? Freedom, freedom to sing, freedom to shout, freedom to dance. You, you know, God wants you to be free to laugh. God wants you to be free to laugh. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of you can't. <laughs> Why can't you laugh? Why? Well, you can make yourself laugh, can't you? Make yourself laugh. I challenge you. Go ahead. Just, just do it, Linda. Laugh a little bit. Linda, laugh. Go ahead, laugh. I want to hear you laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, look at that. Come on, brother. Laugh a little bit. Come on, just a little bit. Be free to laugh. Be free to laugh. And any of you ever sing in the shower? Yeah. You ought to be free to sing in the shower. Just be free. Lift your voice. You ought to be free to dance. I, I, love, I, I love Sister Sherry because she's... Come up here, dance a little bit, Sherry. Just a little bit. Sherry. Sherry. Praise the Lord. <laughs> See, she's free to... It, 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 any of you free to dance? Pete's free to dance, aren't you, Pete? See, you can stop recording now. See, are you free to dance? Are you free to dance? Look at this. They're free to laugh. They're free to dance. I think it's wonderful for a husband and wife to dance and to laugh together. Free to, now, some of you are looking with your faces all twisted like, that is weird. <laughs> free to laugh. Free to dance. Ha, 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 come on. Come on. Free to shout. Come on. Free to shout. Free to shout. Free to forgive. Free, free, to, free to let bygones be God, bygones. Just, just give it to the Lord. Just, just free just to cast all your cares on God. Y'all know what I'm talking about. This is a place. It is a place of life. You just give free. free I, I, this sounds weird. Free to die for Jesus without even thinking about it. Just, okay, Lord, here I am. If this is my time, it's my time. Free. Free from fear. 
I, I am not lying to you. It was probably about five years ago. And I've gone through a lot of horrendous physical problems and just stood on the word. And I'm, I'm in prayer. And I, God shocks me, things he says to me. I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. He shocks me. And one day I'm up in here and I'm praying. And all of a sudden, God just, he just changes the subject matter, just like boom. He, he ain't thinking along the line you're thinking. Do you know that? And God said, this is what the Lord said to me. He said this to me. He said, son, in my heart. I said, yes, father. I knew it was father. He said, uh, do you know why I heal you all the time? And, and I, I learned through the years, whenever he asked me a question, I always said, no, Lord. Because <laughs> uh, he's going to try to teach me now. I said, no, Lord, why? And this is what he said to me. He said, you're not afraid to die. You're not afraid to die. You're not afraid of cancer. I'm not. You're not afraid of a doctor's report. I'm not. I'm not afraid to die. If I die, I die. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. It's not pride. I'm just not, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm, okay, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. You're my, you're my solution. I, I'm not, listen, a lot of men are af afraid of failure. Failure. I'm not afraid of failure because I am one without Christ. I was a failure before when I was a little boy. I couldn't speak. I couldn't hear. I had a terrible speech impediment. My feet were, I was born with my feet growing outward. I was mocked my whole life. So when I got saved, I wasn't afraid of what people said about me and did to me. Because uh, uh, all my life I had been made fun of. And that's why I quit school at 15 and ran with the gang. I was, I'm not afraid. I don't have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Aren't you afraid of being rejected by men? No, I'm afraid of being rejected by God. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I, what, what about money, Pastor Mike? What, what about it? What about I, I, my wife and I, when we got married, we were homeless, slept in my truck, slept in a pup tent for our honeymoon, slept in a bathtub in Germany, just slept in an old school bus. I mean, slept, I mean, just, it is what it is. You know, you go do missionary work, uh, you just go do. You just don't worry about it. Uh, God wants you in that place. I don't know if I want to live in that place, Pastor Mike. There's freedom in that place, and, and, and you're going to... You're going to have to be in that place <laughs> where God's sending you guys. He'll always take care of you. But it'll be fun in this. If you have to sleep in, a, in an old cast iron bathtub, you'll have lots of fun. You will. And uh, it's fun. It's fun living for God. Uh, can you say amen? amen. I, 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 I'm not done, but I will shut up. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. <laughs> it's a place. It's a place of freedom. I wouldn't trade my life for anybody. I've gone through a lot of hard times just like you have. I've gone through amazing adventures. But you know what? I always strive to be in that place where I can hear the voice of God. God, what are you saying? God, what do you want me? I, 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 I seriously, I, I don't have any. I mean, I've written over 10,000 sermon outlines. I don't use them. I go to God and I pray. I say, Lord, what do you want me to preach? What is it you want me to say this week? And, and sometimes I say, Lord, you've got me on the same subject for months on end. He said, they need it. Just keep preaching it. They need I said, okay, Lord. He said, plus you need it. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. So I don't know what you have need of tonight, but God, God, you're in the right place at the right time. Tell somebody, I'm in the right place at the right time. Tell them, 